electrocapacitive. Within the context of enthusiast keyboards, that switch category is currently dominated by one company, Topra. Their unique switches are the key player in the electrocapacitive game for keyboard enthusiasts around the world. From HHKBs to Real Forces to Leopolds, enthusiasts had only one quality option when it came to electrocapacitive switches. Unfortunately, for enthusiasts like myself, trying to merge my love of custom keyboard cases with Topra hasn't always been the easiest endeavor. Sure, today we have aftermarket cases by Ryan Norbauer and Zondat, but those require us to harvest existing housings in order to fill those wonderful cases. What if there was a keyboard that challenged that idea? Niz, with their own line of boards, Niz wants to offer an electrical passive competitor. They have their own 60%, 65%, 75%, and TKLs. Recently, they've been selling their switch components to designers willing to use them. And this is important because there are designers willing to use them. Let's take a look at the conundrum by Thok.co. This keyboard was sent to me by the designer. I was not paid for this review, and it's heading back when I'm done. All the opinions in this review are mine, but some of you already know how I feel about 40%. This review was supposed to be released much sooner, but life happened. I'm not going to get into it, but I do apologize for the delay. I'm sorry to everyone involved and everyone who's been waiting for this review. Now let's talk about the conundrum. 40% ortholinears. Those two words make people think of the dank. I mean, I mean the plank. Well, not today at least, but where do we start? Let's start on the outside. The conundrum is a four-piece case composed of the top, bottom, plate, and brass weight. Those house the PCB and components. The keyboard itself doesn't have crazy or wild geometry, but instead favors the route of a bold outline framing the typing portion. Despite being a 40%, the case language is bold. Even the color options are bold with buyers having the choices of their top and bottom pieces colored E white, classic black, and yellow. I mean, look at this case. The all E white thick bezels certainly make a statement. On the top of the keyboard, we have the logo on the upper left. On the sides, the geometry is simple. Over on the back, we see the USB-C port over to one side. And on the underside, we get a look at the side geometries as well as the weight. Oddly, there seems to be matching machining marks on both sides of the side design. And I just attribute that to, it's just a prototype. Although hopefully these weird machining marks aren't visible in the final units. Upon taking the keycaps off the case, we find the real star of the show. We see the Niz electrical passive parts mounted on the brass plate. This is honestly the real talking point of the conundrum. And honestly, without this, this would just be another 40% ortholinear board that I wouldn't even care to really review or look at. So for those of you used to the construction of Topra boards, you'll know that typically the dome sliders and springs are secured by screws going through the PCB into the plate to secure it. Does the conundrum apply the same principle? Well, let's open the case and find out. Undoing the four screws on the back, the case opens up nice and easy. In fact, it opens up to unveil screws along the top and bottom of the PCB. Upon closer examination, we can see they attach to the top of the case instead of the plates. You've probably spotted it when we were looking under the keycaps, but this PCB does have two use support, so you could go that route instead of all one use. Before we start having a grand old time, Let's take a look at the bottom of the keyboard. There are alignment tabs on the side, bottom USB-C cutout, and that weight. That's a nice weight. A solid piece of keyboard for sure. Okay, back to the real meat and potatoes. The real treat is it's the least amount of screws I've ever had to do for an electrical passive board. Usually I'd fast forward this, but I mean, look at me go. This is real time, baby. No trickery editing here. And here we are with all of our springs and domes. And this is basically it for the construction of the conundrum. I did dome swap the board and I will say the dome alignment is extremely easy on this board. It's also convenient, there's only six screws. So if you screw up, it's not a big deal. 
If I wanted to truly strip it down, I could pop out the housings, but there's no need to do that since it's fine. It's going to be just fine. It's an interesting board. It's a custom electrical capacitive keyboard that doesn't require you to scavenge from other Topra boards. Although if you want the best experience, you probably should. Don't get me wrong, these components are passable, but they lack the good feeling of oneness with cup rubber that Topra really, really has. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Well, at least it seems like an elephant. $547, comparable to some mid-end builds completed and cheap compared to other high-end builds uncompleted. Remember, this does include switches, so there is an assembly option which is absolutely ridiculous. $67 for assembly? No, 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 no. If you're gonna get this, just, just do it yourself. At least it comes with a USB-C cable, but that's, that's cents on the dollar, basically, at this point. It don't matter. $547? Hopefully you get a good typing experience, right? How's the typing experience? Well, it's fine. It's Niz quality electrical capacitive, which doesn't hold a candle to Topra in my honest opinion, but it doesn't mean it has to be completely overlooked. Compared to the earliest Niz products from years and years ago, this is a definite improvement. Of course, unlike normal Niz boards, this does have a nice and fancy brass plate and a pretty decent case. By the way, the housings fit in quite well. The plate tolerances are good. I've been primarily using this board with the Niz 45 gram domes for this board, and I think they're completely fine. I didn't lube the board since I knew I had to send it out, and if I send it out, it might be, you know, taken apart by someone else, and I don't want them to get all luby hands. The overall typing experience, it's nothing to write home about. I don't hate it either. If you're really into Topra-like typing, and you really, really want a 40%, this is the best option, but it's basically your only option for better or worse. Like I mentioned earlier, if this was an otherwise standard ortholinear MX 40%, I would not have bothered to touch it, to touch it at all. But you add that next keyword, electrical passive, and that's what got me interested. The question is whether or not the world is interested in adding that keyword to ortholinear 40%. Will the conundrum end up on your desk? Does it actually exist a market segment out there that wants to pay over $500 for a 40% ortholinear electrical passive keyboard? I mean, possibly. The concept of this board is unique, and I do like it for that. If I was into 40%, I could definitely make this into a board that suits my style. While the conundrum is expensive, I appreciate its existence. Unfortunately, overall, it won't be the board for me, but maybe it'll be the 40% for you. Thank you for watching, my man of interests.